Hello there, welcome to a very special edition of the West Island Sport QPR podcast. Uh, both David and Kevin are on holiday this week, so we are joined by an old face and uh, the man who helped start this podcast, Dan Bennett, and um, who's here to talk to us about Karamoko Dembele. Um, I'm speaking having watched QPR labour to a 2 1 win over Cambridge last night, um, which we'll probably talk about in further detail next week after the Sheffield United game. But for now, we're going to talk about QPR's one of QPR's two latest signings, um, who spent last season on loan at Blackpool. And Dan, being our official Blackpool correspondent, um, <laughs> has seen plenty of him in action. Now, there's uh, plenty of very informative um, tales on Twitter about him from an analysis point of view, which are well worth reading. But Dan, you've actually watched him play numerous occasions. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, I think it's a really exciting signing. Um, you know, he was excellent in League One last year. I think when he first came on loan, um, he was sort of in and out of the team. I think Neil Critchley was using him. Neil Critchley, obviously, a name will be very familiar to QPR fans, was using him uh, sort of in and out of the team, using him kind of um, strategically. Uh, but by the end, sort of second half of the season, he'd really come into his own and he was sort of starting every game and he was he was our best player and he was our key man, um, especially in an attacking sense. He, I mean, yeah, I guess he, he can play out wide, but he's more of a, he's better when he's coming in centrally, you know, playing out on the right, coming onto a stronger left foot. So he's not really an out and out winger who's going to go past and put a cross in. Um, he's probably similar. I think someone pointed this out on Twitter, actually. He's probably quite similar to Ilias Chair in a lot of ways, but obviously Chair's coming off the left onto his right foot. So I guess Dembele would be on the the other flank. So but I think it's a, it's a really exciting signing. Um, I'm not sure how many goal contributions he got last year, but I think it's like 20, over 20. Um, you know, he's, I, I expected him to, to go on to bigger things. I still had a, a slight hope that Blackpool would be able to get him back, but unfortunately that's uh, that dream has died so but yeah he's 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 one of the my favorite sort of players on loan that I've seen at Blackpool over my my years of supporting them and I think it's a really exciting signing for QPR and he's certainly a player that you know if he's used in the right role as I said and you know he's given the opportunity that he can probably go on to the, the Premier League in in a few years maybe and QPR can make a a big profit on their return, which is obviously what I guess they'll be they'll be hoping for, or that he takes them to the Premier League himself. So we shall see. Yeah, he's on a lo- the deal with Brest is a loan deal with a view to uh, making the signing permanent at the end of the right. season. Um, I mean, you saw plenty of Chris Willock when he was at QBR. Does he have similar traits to what Willock had when he was sort of at his pomper? You know, when you were covering Rangers, I think yeah, I think he's a slightly different player. Um, but he's got similarities in the sense that, you know, Willock knew where the goal was and, you know, he's, he's, he was a good finisher. And I think Dembele is that as well. I think one of his main strengths is the quality he's actually got on the ball. You know, he, he you know, his accuracy in terms of both finishing and also passing as well. You know, he's really good when he comes off the right and he plays little through balls into the striker who's sort of making a run beyond the last defender. So, yeah, I think there are similarities there. And I think, you know, having lost, Chris Willock, I know, obviously, having sort of watched QPR from afar and kept an eye on them, obviously, Willock seemed to have lost his way a bit. Because, I mean, when I was still covering QPR, you know, he seemed like he was destined for the Premier League and, you know, he was scoring goals for fun every week and, obviously, that sort of tailed off. So, but, you know, he's still a player that needed replacing, right? So, I think, as replacements go, I think Dembele is certainly a, a, a very good one. And they only played a handful of games prior to joining Blackpool. I think it was a... Uh maybe 10 or so in his time at Celtic and, uh, you know, didn't really set the world alight at Brest, which is understandable for a young man who probably, I'm not too sure if he speaks French or not, but, you know, foreign country, et cetera, et cetera. But he really found his feet at, at Blackpool. But as you say, mm. it took him a little bit of time to sort of, sort of settle in. But, I mean, it, but looking just at the raw stats, he seems like a player that's really thrived from playing week in, week out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, And I think, like you said, when he first came in, obviously, I'm not sure. I think he's, is he 20 or 21? I'm not sure. He's, he's very young. 21. He's very young either way. And to be honest, it's not just his age, but like when you look at him, you know, when I was watching him last year, he does look like a kid playing against men. You know, that's not meant as a dig to him in any way. That is just what he looks like. He's, he, you know, he's tiny. Um, but what he can do when he's got the ball in his, with the ball at his feet is, is, is incredible. So, yeah, I think, 
you know, when he first came in, having not played a lot of football, Critchley wanted to give him a bit of time to get up to speed and he'd sort of, you know, use him um, quite wisely. And, you know, if there was a, we were going to play a big physical team, maybe he'd he'd leave him out. So, like, when we played Stevenage under Steve Evans last year, he was on the bench. But then I think by the end of the season, he, that's all went out the window and he, you know, he realised that he was by far our best player and our most dangerous player and was playing him week in, week out. But like you say, I think because he'd not played much football and because of his kind of stature and because it's League One, it's obviously, and the, the Championship is the same, it's quite a physical league. You know, give him a bit of time to get up to speed and, you know, maybe he'll need that in the Championship as well. Obviously, it's a new league. Um, so maybe he will need a bit of time to, to get up to speed and obviously I'm not sure what his pre-season's been like. I don't think, I think he's been playing for his, his club. I think there was all planning for, for him to depart. So, yeah, maybe a bit of patience is needed, but you know, if he carries on the way he has been last season, then I think that patience will be rewarded, certainly. It's quite a successful um, path from Bloomfield Road to Loftus Road over the years with the likes of Clark Carlisle, Casper Gorks, Trevor Sinclair making the way down. Mm. Do, you, do you reckon he can sort of have a similar... I'm trying to say is to jump from League One to Championship. I mean, is it closer now than it perhaps was in the past? Or do you think he his, his level of ability just kind of makes it the transition will be quite seamless. I think, yeah, like I said, because he's, I don't know what, I don't know what his preseason has been like and because, you know, maybe he'll need a bit of time just to get up to speed, especially, you know, coming into a new club, new teammates, new tactics. So I think there'll be that kind of bedding in period. But in terms of like the golfing quality, I don't think it's that big. I mean, see what Ipswich did last season, you know, they straight up from league one and then straight up to the premier league. So, you know, I think the golf between the championship and the Premier League is much, much bigger than the golf between League One and the championship. So I don't really have any doubts that he's good enough for the level. Um, it's just about, like I said, getting up to speed and making sure he's used in the right role. But I mean, Marty uh, Sifuente seems like a very smart guy and a good manager. I'm sure he would have bought him with a clear plan in, in place to, to get the best out of him. And I think that's what the most important thing is. Obviously, keep you know, got some good players, but if you're going to get the best out of him, he does have to be a main focus point of that attack. And you can't just be, you know, left out wide. He has to come in and be involved in the play, which hopefully he will. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see how he does to be fair. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a bit jealous that he's gone to QPR. I was hoping that he'd come back to Blackpool. But in terms of like, just from interest in the player himself, you know, I'm excited to see what he can do at the, at the next level. And I'll certainly be keeping a close eye on him because, you know, it'd be nice to see a you know player who's played for Blackpool. I mean, we had like Kian and Dewsbury Hall on loan as well. He's obviously now gone to Chelsea, so it's quite nice when you see these these guys gone to bet bigger and better things. And you know, maybe he'll be playing in the Premier League one day, and you can sort of say, you know, he, he used to play for for Blackpool. So yes, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what he can do. Uh, you, you touched on him very briefly before. And, you know, former Rangers boss Neil Critchley back at Blackpool. I guess Rangers fans would be quite intrigued to know. You know. How was he received when he returned after kind of leaving kind of, I guess, under yeah. a little bit of a pause? I think there was, there was a fair bit of like, a not, you know, not, not anger's maybe a little bit strong, but frustration maybe among the fan base. I think some fans were still annoyed that he left for Aston Villa. Obviously, went to be Steven Gerrard's assistant when he left Blackpool and then ended up getting sacked with um, Steven Gerrard after, I think, three or, three or four months and then ended up at QPR for, what was it, two months? About two months. Twelve games. Twelve games. Yeah, yeah. So, and obviously that that didn't go to plan. And then he, uh, yeah, at the end of the start of the next season, he came back to Blackpool. So I, I think there is still a little bit of that hangover from from that whole thing. And to be that, I think it's less about that and more just a bit frustration with what's going on on the pitch. I mean, we finished eighth last season. I mean, we took you know, if we'd have beat Reading on the final day, we'd have got in the playoffs. Um, but we ended up losing. And then uh, I think it was Barnsley conceded the goal late on so it meant that had we won we actually would have made the playoffs so but I think that yeah there's a bit been a bit of annoyance with the, the style of play and things like that and um yeah we, we had a good win last night but we lost on the opening day to, to Crawley so I think he is under a bit of pressure now to to really make it work but yeah let's uh let's hope he can but it'll be a bit a lot harder without uh Karamoka Dembele I think this season because I think without him last season we would have not been anywhere near the playoffs to be honest, I mean, he, you know, his contribution was was massive. So losing him this season is is a blow, and we're gonna have to try and um, try and adjust to that, you know. And has he spoken much about his brief tenure at QPR, Critchley? 
I don't think he has now. He's probably just trying to uh, put that to the back of his mind and <laughs> forget about that. He probably not doesn't look back at it too fondly in his in his career, you know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, they would say it was a, a privilege and an honour to manage QPR, but in terms of results on the pitch, it wasn't a wasn't a successful time. So I don't really think he's he said much about that, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh I'm you know, I he's he's a good guy and I, I met him actually just before I, I left um West London Sport when I was still covering QPR. I did actually meet Neil Critchley and when he was appointed as QPR manager and asked him a few questions that were quite kind of detailed about his time at Blackpool and he obviously thought it was a bit strange that someone <laughs> knew so much about about Blackpool. But um you know and I just had a bit of a joke with him. Uh, Paul at QPR sort of said before I left, uh, oh, you know, he's a Blackpool fan and Neil Critchley, oh, he hates me. I was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't hate you. I don't hold any sort of grudges. And, you know, he was a, he's a really, he's a, he's a good guy. So I do, I do hope it works out for him, but we shall see. Great stuff, Dan. Thanks for your time. No worries. Look forward to watching Dembele. <laughs>